last burn. So Mike and I are out here on the uh, Southwest Miramichi. We're doing a stretch from Juniper probably down to about Doaktown, I would think. We'll pull out there, maybe 125, 130 kilometers. get to our campsite tonight and have sun. Yeah. <laughs> Be able to sit back and chill. No, that doesn't happen around here. No, because we didn't chill with the wood stove. <laughs> I'd lug that thing around for quite some time before somebody convinced me not to take it. The stove? Yeah. yeah I, hear you. I mean, portages, yeah. Not no. Generally not bringing the stove unless yeah. staying in a, some spot for a couple of days. Yeah. Sure, it's one thing to pull it behind the sled, but yeah. you know, carrying it through the woods, I don't think so. Yeah. But it's perfect for this trip. Yeah. It's an easy. Bit of a low spot there. Here we go. All right, forward, Mike. I'm gonna go off the rock back here.
So we're on the third night of our trip and we're hoping to make some bread to go with supper here. We just have to warm, well it says hot water, I don't want it boiling that's for sure, but and then one whole half of this container this is two servings here yeah I might actually let that cool a bit a little too warm and I'll melt my butter in the meantime a tablespoon of butter all right so I'm gonna add some yeast to the yeah, that's a good one. I should help get it started and help my bread to rise. I don't know how much I needed, but yeast. <clears throat> so much I need. Definitely enough. The yeast is moving around doing its thing. It's just about ready to go and this is where it gets messy. We need to mix all of that into there, let it rise for an hour, punch it down, and then cook it in the double boiler, hopefully. Really need a bigger bowl for this effort. So it took a little bit of doing, but I've got this all rolled up good and doughy. I'm just going to put the um, lid on it, and then I think just with the tent door shut, it'll it'll stay warm enough and hopefully rise over the next hour or so. And on to next steps. Keep the bugs out. And that's it for now. So it looks like our dough did its thing and has definitely risen. I'm just going to sort of punch this back a bit with the fork, so to speak. I wouldn't. Normally I'd have a nice bit of flour on the wood chopping board at home and clean hands, but I don't, so I'll just knock this back a little and I'll probably let it actually rise again a bit more before we get to cooking. We haven't got the fire going here yet, so alright. Round two. So our bread has risen a second time here and I'm just going to, oh wow, let's knock it down a bit before I put it in the uh, can here. I've already um, margarine the inside of the container so it doesn't stick hopefully. It doesn't need to be fancy, it just needs to be in there. Okay. Water's already boiling in the double boiler here, and I'll just lower the can in, put the lid on it, and we just have to keep it going for 
45, 50 minutes. There we go, that's it. Here's our dehydrated meal. This is a favorite of Mike and Sandra's. They've been cooking it for years and that's where we got the recipe for it. Use it in my dehydrator. And we'll split this up between our two meals. Looks like we're even have it packed in there. Even it up a bit. Don't want anybody going hungry. So we've had the uh, bread on here simmering for about 45 minutes and as you can see it's definitely done. Look at that. Just rolls right to the top. I'm not sure how we're going to get this out. I think I'm going to have to pour out the liquid first but should be able to lift that loaf out of there I hope. And in the background you see we've got the kettle boiling and we're just going to put that on our rice melee as the, as the bread cools. And that'll be ready in about 20 minutes. Oh, that was a bit too thin. I bet. Do you want it well done or I've been having to trade the bottom? You. Sorry, I jumped ahead of you, Simon. No, it's all right. It's all good. It's nice and hot. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Really that. well done, man. That is fantastic. Mmm. I almost had to bleep myself there. Mmm. <laughs> Meat bread on the Miramichi River. Pretty good vacation.
Morning of day four. This morning I got up, there was clear blue skies, and, but they were calling for a lot of rain today. And sure enough, within 15 minutes of being up, the clouds rolled in and the temperatures dropped. So we had planned on taking today as a rest day. And uh, so there may not be a lot of filming, but uh, sure we're gonna have a good time. Got plenty of firewood uh, for the stove. It'll be nice and relaxing. Let's see what the day brings. How many times have we crossed, Simon? Uh, that would be four. We might have to do this four times again. That water is so cold. Whew. Well, when uh, we had planned this stop, uh, we had decided we were going to spend two days because they were calling for a significant amount of rain. It looked like it was going to be that way when I got up this morning as the clouds moved in quickly, but uh, it turned out nice and sunny, which was good for us because we got to do a nice hike at that waterfall. 
It was a, a really fun hike, a bit challenging, but a lot of fun. I don't do a lot of product uh, uh, demonstrations on our channel. Whenever I do, it's something I'm really interested in. Uh, a Canadian company reached out to me and uh, they're getting into uh, making waterproof uh, backpacks and uh, bags. This is the Soffit Boda 60 liter bag. Uh, the brand is Soffit and uh, they make uh, three different sizes of the Boda bag. This one is a 60 liter. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the details. Right now, I'm sitting next, uh, kneeling right next to a nice babbling brook, which is making it probably a bit loud. So we're going to move the camera and we're going to go over some of the information on this bag. So before we get too far into this video, I just want to let you guys know this is not a review. I'm not a gear reviewer, but I'm going to give you my thoughts on this product and also provide you with the information provided by the manufacturer. And when in, they got into uh, building uh, these bags, these waterproof bags, uh, their philosophy uh, was that they were going to do it uh, so that it, uh, they're trying to get the best bags possible on the market. So pretty impressive. Um, they've got uh, some pretty heavy duty material uh, that they've used for the build and some nice design ideas and we'll be going over a few of them. So according to the manufacturer, the, the Voda Soppet Dry Bag is the strongest dry duffel bag slash backpack on the market. And it's the only bag with IPX7 certification, meaning that you can submerge the bag into one meter of water for 30 minutes and your contents will remain dry. So the fabric on the strongest bags on the market today are roughly around 600 denier, while the Voda is manufactured at 900 denier. Another thing that sets the Voto apart from many manufacturers is many of the uh, Druffle dry bags have a PVC coating inside and outside or a PU coating. So in their design decided to incorporate the uh, higher end TPU coating. Uh, they've coated both the inside and outside. All right, so the information I just went over was provided to me by the manufacturer. Now we're gonna go over some of the features of the bag. So there's quite a few different straps and buckles. So right here, this is a, these straps allow you to carry this as a backpack. It also has a sternum strap here, which makes it a lot easier to carry. Also, we have some more buckles here. Hold your gear down. And once you uh, take the buckles off the side, it's a roll top design, which adds to the waterproofness, but uh, Previously I'd mentioned about an IPX7 certification and the way they achieve this is with the way this is sealed in. As you can see it's not rolled up anywhere but no air is coming out. It's sealed tight. So it's a bit tricky when you first start doing it uh, on how you open it. I'm still learning so apologies but from what I could tell from their uh, information you have to put your thumbs in turn it into a bit of an S shape and then it'll pop open. So it seals a lot like a Ziploc bag. Some of the other features you also have these uh, webbing straps here where you can uh, attach more of your gear to the bag. Also has a couple of D-rings here and we go around the side, there's another one here, a little water bottle holder, and the nicest part, the release valve, which uh, basically it takes the air out, but more importantly, once you have gear in there, you can just blow more air in, and that will uh, make your bag a bit more um, like a flotation device, basically. So hopefully easier to, to catch your gear after you fall over in a rapid.
It was rained off and on uh, most of the day yesterday, so it's a good day to take a rest day at camp. It really opened up as the sun went down. It uh, poured most of the night, so but we stayed nice and comfortable in the hot tent. So we're just packing up now, uh, heading out for uh, the next spot. And uh, before we go, just wanted to show a bit of an oddity. <laughs> uh, we're not, not sure why it is, but there are so many grills on this campsite here. <laughs> Right here in this bundle, uh, there's eight of them. Uh, there's another two over there, and we saw another couple down a trail. So, we saw at least 12 grills for some weird reason. Not sure if anybody knows why, other than people's laziness. Should we leave a grill, Simon? We didn't bring a grill. No. I think you can bring a grill and trade a grill, but you can't just take a grill. <laughs> Well, we started out uh, gray skies, turned to downpours here and there, and so we were in the middle of a pretty, pretty big downpour, and we decided to check out this island. And it's like something out of a dream. It's gorgeous here. Wow. Would be one for the memory banks. We're uh, getting closer and closer to civilization, so uh, it's uh, getting harder to find good spots. But what a spot! Well, folks, I don't know if you guys can see the clouds in behind there, but uh, the sky has turned is turning black. 
it's going to be a really bad storm rolling in here. What do you think of today so far, Sam? Hasn't ended very well, but we had a <laughs> good paddling day. <laughs> had a bit of rain on us, but now it's cold, wet, damp, and pretty miserable. But we'll get the fire going and warm up in no time. Yep. I mean, the showers have been coming off and on, so this may clear up and we might have a nice warm evening because when the sun did come out, it was, hot. It was really nice. Well, after uh, four, four to five days of spotty weather, it's really nice to feel the sun. Yes, this might be payback. <laughs> it's long overdue. So, uh, we're pretty well set up. There's a whole bunch of dead standing hardwood here, which is uh, making things pretty easy to collect firewood. Simon's cooking up. We got can cake. <laughs> Chocolate cake. That's going to be fantastic. So. What a beautiful, beautiful place to camp. This is awesome. Yeah, hopefully it stays clear right through. Yeah. And we're back to this again. I think this one's going to be worse than the other. There's wind with this one. Want some ice with your drink, Simon? Yeah, I like this. So as you can see, we've made a decadent chocolate and cashew cake in the uh, double boiler and we're just going to drop it out in the bowl here hopefully and let it cool a little more before we eat some. Oh, there we go. Didn't leave any in the can. What do you think, Mike? It looks amazing. Look at that. Let that cool a little more. I guess there's really just one thing missing though. That's uh no <laughs> <You stop>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sakes. It's a special occasion today. Alright, make a wish. <laughs> You crazy bugger.
Well, folks, I realize you guys probably can't see me very well, but just want to uh, come out and see the stars. It's uh, it's our last night on this trip, and it's been a really fantastic paddling trip and camping. Um, having brought the the hot tent and the stove, it's cold. It's been near freezing almost every night, and we've had rain all the time. So with that dampness and the cold, having the wood stove has been phenomenal. I can't say enough good things about the snow trekker. I've said it before, and having the wood stove in there too, it's been perfect. So uh, thank you so much for watching so far. We still got a little bit more. We still got to get back to uh, the vehicles at the end of uh, tomorrow. But uh, wow, what a fantastic trip. It's been great. So we're nearing the end of the trip. This is a, our, this was our last night, and uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's been a great trip, and uh, just want to talk about the uh, Voda 60 liter bag by Soffit. Uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, it's really, really rugged and uh, really functional. Uh, I love the uh, carrying straps here with the sternum strap in the middle. I also love the fact that the handles here are attached there, so it makes it easy to carry. Um, it uh, takes a little bit of practice to open and close. Well, closing is fairly simple, but opening it is a little bit uh, um, different, but uh, eventually you kind of get it. So, uh, huge thank you to the people at Stop It. I'm really impressed with this bag. It's fantastic. Um, I would definitely recommend it. I'm going to be using it for a long time. So you've probably uh, noticed that we've been using a couple of different paddles on uh, 
on this trip. And uh, this one here was given to me by my buddy Brandon. He made it uh, out of a couple of laminated a couple of pieces of ash together and uh, stained it. And as you can see, it's a pretty phenomenal paddle. When you're out in the boat, you need to have uh, three paddles and all of your other safety gear, life jackets, lines, all of that stuff. So it's been uh, great to have this one along and another paddle as well. If we break something, we're, uh, we're all set to go. We have wedged in some large rocks. <laughs> Yeah, so on our last day here, we've started to uh, see a few more people along the river. No surprise, it's a little more developed. Um, but clearly some folks are out and looking for fiddleheads. The famous Miramichi fiddlehead. It's still a bit, I think it's still a couple of days early, but everybody, maybe they've got their secret spot there all over it. Oh, I hadn't noticed that before, Mike. That's nice. <laughs> so you've used your pant leg to keep the sun off of your neck. So instead of getting redneck, you're gonna burn your burn your knee. Just one knee, though. That's great. I forgot my full brim hat at home, and it's a sunny day. We finally got one. I'm not complaining. Yeah. We were owed this sun. I think it's a good look. Yeah. That's how I get all the ladies. fortunate when we're out here on a number of rivers in New Brunswick we've got a uh, proper paddling mat these are quite a few years old now um, and I don't know if even they're in print anymore but if you look around you can find them sometimes and they've got uh, they're waterproof and still pretty accurate so helpful to get us down river Stop on Amos Island. Amos Island? Amos. Oh. <laughs> Well, folks, that was our last uh, stop of the trip until we make it to our pickup location. So that was nice. Nice and relaxing. What a great trip this has been. 
Ah, first paddling trip in early May. Can't beat it. I think it's gonna be a great summer. Big thanks to Simon. Oh, can't see yet. <laughs> Big thanks to Simon over there. Thank you. Gonna ball. That's yeah, been great. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next thing, depending on what comes up, likely we'll be at the vehicles in about uh, about 45 minutes time. So it's been awesome. Mike. <laughs> Sweeper. Yeah, we're gonna go, wanna go uh, right. Cut to the left. Yeah. Okay, there's a canoe in there, so it should be. Yeah. Go down here or over there? Uh, I think we want to go right where there. Where there is? Yeah, up here on the. Oh. <laughs> Didn't have any trouble finding the place? No. Good. No. Is all right if we pull out here? Guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Had a bit of hail yesterday. <laughs> My mom had said there was some hail and thunder. And I talked to me and she said there was some right at your house. Oh, was there? Yeah. Did you dump the water out of it before bringing it up? Huh? Did you dump the water out oh, before? Oh, you get the water jug on this end. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Throat uh, firing up, Mike. Yep. Throat has to turn around anyway. Oh, oh there. Now I'm doing a video. Oh, Jesus, Mike. <laughs> I thought you were taking pictures. <laughs>